Well, yeah. talks are continuing We've today over whether the strictest coronavirus rules should now be expanded further across England. But is expanding tougher local measures the solution to curbing the virus? The alternative, of course, could be wider national um, restrictions. Well, we're joined now by gym owner Jed Weldon, who says gyms that are COVID secure and safe should be able to stay open. We've also have restaurant and bar owner Karina Jarav in Manchester, who says there should be a national circuit breaker, a short national lockdown. And hotel owner Alex Polisi thinks it would be unfair for regions in the southwest with low infection rates to have to lock down. Meanwhile, the mayor of Liverpool, Joe Anderson, says the economic consequences of the lockdown are devastating. The associate professor of cellular microbiology at the University of Reading, Simon Clark, says local lockdowns are needed and they don't go far enough. And travel expert Simon Calder also joins us. No, we can't get out of this up. bunch. Then we're, we're, go we're going to be in trouble, aren't we? We've got all the experts here. Shall we start in Liverpool? Because, frankly, Joe Anderson, you are leading the way, the way that the rest of the panel uh, might be concerned or keen to go. Uh, tier three has come in. Just remind us what that means for people in the city of Liverpool region. Well, our uh, restaurants stay open till 10 o'clock. Our pubs, our um, booth makers, our casinos, our gymnasiums are all being forced to close by uh, the fact that Liverpool has been placed in Tier 3. That's the restrictions that the government are putting on uh, cities, towns uh, and districts that are placed in Tier 3. So that's what Liverpool faces today. Uh, and for a month, reviewed every month, but potentially lasting for six months. That's what the people of Liverpool uh, are dealing with today. And what impact is it having... Firstly, we've seen the pictures of uh, the revellers outside at the 10pm curfew, clearly flouting uh, social distancing, not wearing masks. One guy we can even see coughing uh, there in the group. Um, how have people reacted generally to these increased restrictions? Well, I think, look, you know, that, that group of people that you see there are a tiny minority. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that people not following the rules and the regulations that we've been trying to encourage people to do over the last five to six weeks is the result why the virus has continued to entrench itself but continue to grow in the city of Liverpool to the extent that, you know, we have uh, 3,300 cases. Our hospital uh, officials are telling us that next week they can't cope. We had 30 deaths in the last seven days. So it's usually disappointing to see people ignoring the advice uh, that, that were given. But, you know, I can understand uh, people's uh, anxiety and, and concerns uh, about, you know, the dithering that the government uh, and Boris Johnson in particular seems to be taking at the minute, not making a decision uh, one way or another about what to do. As we see, you know, as you rightly said, more and more cities likely to face tier three measures today and over the next few days. It seems to me that we were too late going into lockdown in, in, in the first instance this year and we're too late now. And as yeah. a consequence of that, you know, we're seeing businesses and we're seeing people uh, suffer. But that was then. This is now. As you say, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear about the future of businesses and livelihoods, a lot of fear about the numbers rising and you are dealing with the strictest restrictions. Um, Aren't the local measures the only way forward or do you think they are wrong? You know, you, we, we're in this position now. Maybe we should have gone into lockdown earlier, maybe we shouldn't. We don't know. But is this the way forward? Do you back it as the solution? Well, look, cl clearly the government are deciding on this issue, not me nationally, what they do. I back uh, do take an action in, in Liverpool because we've got to bring the virus under control. At the moment, it's out of control. I asked for three, four weeks ago now uh, for us to have a circuit break in, in, in Liverpool. You know, the scientists, the medical experts all told John, Johnson that that needed to be done four weeks ago and that was ignored. So the reality is, is that what the government decided to do, whether it's a specific targeted local lockdowns in, in areas or a national one, is for, their, for them to decide, my opinion, is that we need a national lockdown. The damage that's being caused to our economy can last for decades if we do not 
tackle it and do something about it. Give okay. businesses the support that's needed mm. and help people survive let's, and get through this virus. Let's put that to someone in a completely different area of the country. Alex Polizzi, hotel owner. Um, you're down in the southwest in Cornwall. A yeah. very different rate of infection down there, but uh, there are those calls for it to be a national lockdown. How would you react to that? Well, I think it would be a disaster for my business, and of course I don't want that. Um, and we haven't shown how we're going to get out of the next national lockdown. What's going to stop it all happening all over again? So we are trying very hard to make sure that all our protocols mean that anyone who comes to stay with us is safe, that the staff are safe. And it seems that so far we've done a really good job at that. One so of the I arguments, don't... One of the arguments for a national lockdown um, would be that people... For instance, in London, at half term, where there are higher rates of infection, will be able to go down and spend time in Cornish hotels and potentially spread the infection. If you have a national circuit breaker, you stop that infection uh, ending up in Cornwall. Yes, but we had the whole summer where we had people travelling to us and actually we managed it very, very well. And surely, I mean, everyone's desperate to be able to get out and the best thing is to be outside and walking and, and in the fresh air. Um, I, I think it's a really depressing thought that we're going to be somehow, in a way, punished for the fact that infection rates are high everywhere where they are high. Mm. They are not in Cornwall, and that, I think, is partly because we've been so careful as to how we've managed our incoming okay. guests. Can I ask um, Pro Associate Professor Simon Clark, um, as the scientist on the panel, is it an effective way of dealing with this to look at areas where the rates of infection are high and basically lock those areas down? Or is there too much risk of uh, spreading the virus, particularly as we're coming up to a, a time of year when families will be travelling around? Well, if people are travelling from one low-risk area to another low-risk area, then it's still low-risk. You used London there. Uh, as an example. OK, if there's a problem in London, uh, impose restrictions on London and prevent people there from spreading it elsewhere. That's how this, this regionalisation works. We've got to remember that this is going to change all the time, week on week. Where we are today isn't where we're going to be in a week's time or a month's time. So what we need is a, a rapid and flexible uh, approach to this, where we've got tailored responses to certain areas, but it needs to be done quickly. I think there's a bit too much uh, naval contemplating that goes on. Well, I want to ask Simon Calder some specific mm. questions from, from viewers, but just before we do, let's talk to Karina Jadov, who's in Manchester, who takes a different view to that, don't you? Uh, you're there in Manchester, which we understand may be given tighter restrictions, may go the way of Liverpool today. That's one of the thoughts it might be announced. You believe there should be a national lockdown, a circuit breaker lockdown. Why is that better? Well, firstly, let me just start by saying that the implication that I'm hearing from Southern Voices in this conversation is that there is some kind of failure within the North in the way that we are handling things. Um, and we're completely ignoring the fact that we have a massive student population and obviously there's a big movement of people because of that in September. We have implemented thousands of pounds worth of measures in within hospitality to ensure a very, very safe space for people. So what we're seeing from the science is that it doesn't necessarily support the fact that people are contracting coronavirus within our environment. However, there obviously is a problem. So we're, we're implementing local lockdowns and tiered, tiered lockdowns. But for me, it's very, very difficult for us to operate with one arm tied behind our back. Mm -hmm. And we're getting to a point where we may move into tier three. Um, and it makes it even more complicated because people are very confused. So every time information is leaked to the press by the government and there's no official announcement, we see a swathe of people cancelling reservations, wanting deposit refunds and just being generally confused. So then we have to communicate the message again. So the reason that I really do think that almost a circuit break of lockdown would be beneficial right now is that it will be one clear message for the entire country Everybody would have to comply and it would give them a small period of time okay. to get test and trace together 
and get things organized so that we can reopen and actually function as a society with coronavirus you know so still bring, there because we've got to function yeah. it would be bring clarity right simon calder you're up uh, we've got lots and lots of questions from viewers. I'm going through some of the searching for answers myself, trying to think what may or may not be possible to do with youngsters in half term. So the problem, it seems to me right now, is with Tier 1s, Tier 2s, Tier 3s, is that travel is confusing. For instance, let me give you an example. It, it, there's someone that's, that's asked this directly. They live in a Tier 2. They wanted to go on holiday to a Tier 1. Um, do they operate in that Tier 1 as if they were a tier, under Tier 2 rules? Or because the place they're going to is Tier 1, they operate under those rules? So can they, for instance, have households mixing indoors or out up to six? You see what I mean? If you're in an area that's a higher restriction, do you operate under that or do you operate under where you're going to? And the same question has cropped up with people that are working in two different tiers from where they live. It's incredibly complicated. And of course, it gets worse because you are looking at a situation where the four nations of the UK have their own rules, which is why, of course, as we were hearing just earlier, Wales has decided we are going to impose a rule on people coming in from uh, various parts of uh, uh, the other nations if they are in a, an area of higher uh, lockdown. Now, the basic rule is if you're in England and you're in tier three, then you are not going anywhere. Um, you should not be travelling for fun. Of course, um, work and education are different, but talking about half-term holidays, you're not going uh, on holiday. Um, and similarly, people from outside Tier 3 areas should only travel to or through those areas for essential purposes or to get through. So, for example, um, Manchester goes on the Tier 3 list, then uh, Manchester Airport will still be open, but only for the purposes of people coming in from other parts of but Northern what about England. If currently you're to... in Tier 2 in Manchester, can you pop down to the hotel in Cornwall? And if you get there, can you mix with another household? Uh, yes, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the rule of six is um, absolutely critical, but generally, if you are in an area, uh, the, the, if you live in an area, then the tier rules that apply to that area apply to you. Um, so therefore you need to respect those even if you are in a, a lower risk area. What the, the overall rule, and I'm afraid Kate, this is the only way to do it, is always err on the side of caution. Yeah. If you think something is probably uh, not going to be right, then uh, you absolutely shouldn't do it. And of course, nobody with any symptoms should be travelling at all. No. Because, uh, you're and just sorry, to it, sorry to rush you, Simon, but another question here is how uh, about going abroad? So how, what do we do? There are lots of great offers. I'm sure you can list some brilliant ones. I, I've got a friend who's, who's off to Greece for £15 flights. That seems cheap. And, and, and nice, and it's one of the countries that, that's still clear to but go to, isn't it? presumably not a friend in Liverpool. Yeah, but if you're in a Tier 2, can you still go? And if you'll get there, do you operate under Greek rules? And also, they're asking, how is it possible that when you go abroad to a quarantine that is quarantined, you have to self-isolate for two weeks when you get back? But actually, if you go to somewhere like Liverpool, you don't. Uh, yes, exactly, and yet yeah, yeah, more confusion. So basically, if you're in Tier 2 or Tier 1, you are allowed to travel abroad on holiday. Of course, um, the rules that apply in, say, Greece are going to be different from the rules that apply in, um, for example, uh, Leicester. So therefore, uh, you, uh, I, I suggest, should obey both <laughs> sets of rules. But um, uh, that the... Uh, again, the t rules on travel for England for the tiers are only advisory, which makes things even more complicated. Of course, if you're if uh, so, so therefore, yes, you can go on holiday, but always be respectful, uh, be responsible, do all the stuff that airline passengers have to do. Um, and of course, if you are going to a country, including France, Spain, Turkey, where you need to self-isolate, then you are going to have to come back and sit okay. at home for two weeks. Let's um, talk, OK. Uh, sorry, Simon. We just need to... Uh, we have another guest who hasn't uh, managed to uh, say a word yet. Um, but let's talk to him now. Jed Weldon is a gym owner, but you're a gym owner in London, Jed. So currently, you can operate in a COVID-secure way. 
We have a situation in Liverpool where a gym owner has been fined £1,000 for staying open, despite the fact that, of course, it's gone into Tier 3 and the gym should have closed down. Then he sees seven police officers enter the gym uh, to enforce the rules. Are you concerned that if London, which currently may go into, may go into Tier 2 restrictions, but if it went into Tier 3 restrictions, obviously that's, that would have an effect on your business. Do you have some sympathy with the gym owner in Liverpool? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think they're doing just what they need to do to survive um, at the moment. Like some of the others, we um, have spent thousands of pounds in the last few months uh, making sure that our gym is, is operating in a COVID safe way. Um, we are operating, you know, on half the numbers in terms of members that we um, we need really to survive. Um, and the reality is the science doesn't back it up. You know, gyms and leisure um, have shown that um, the, the COVID rate is just 0.3 per 100,000 um, at the moment. So I think the, the question and the frustration from an industry that was shut down last time with, with 24 hours notice um, and shut down for one of the longest periods, um, you know, the science just doesn't back it up at the moment. And the reality is... OK, okay Jed, um, sorry, sorry just, we're just squeezed for time at the moment. Uh, and Simon Calder yeah. has to go and get a flight. Uh, but Joe <laughs> Anderson there Bye, uh, in Liverpool, in your position, you couldn't possibly... You know, you, people have to obey the rules, don't they? No matter how sceptical they might be about them. Well, that's the point about the dithering, isn't it? Because where, where you've got this scattergun approach, this whack-a-mole approach, gyms, as has rightly been pointed out by the gym owner there, are probably one of the most safest environments to be in. And when they see schools and retail operating with higher rates of infections, it's frustrating for them. So without the financial support and a national uh, lockdown in terms of circuit breaker, it's understandable why they're angry and frustrated. Um, Simon, you're off to catch a flight. I don't know if you're allowed to tell us where to. I think he's frozen. I think he's just frozen. Oh. He's gone into sort of digital quarantine. Oh, go. no, there he is. He's back. He's where back. Are you, where are you off to, Simon? Oh. Uh, where are you off to? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. He's off to Ireland, so there's a whole uh, series I'm of rules there. Uh, yeah, here I am. Um, as you can see, I'm just actually at the airport, just about to get on my flight. Uh, oh, we're just losing your line slightly. I mean, of course, uh, and, you know, have a good flight. Uh, there is an irony, of course, for a lot of people who will think, hang on a moment, how come... And we still can get on flights. To many Northern us, Ireland with huge numbers. To, to, um, to, to, many pe to many places. There might be restrictions when you come back. You might have to have had a test at the airport, depending on where you're going. Uh, but you can sit next to somebody on a flight going somewhere, but you can't mix with other people in certain households, and a lot of people find that very frustrating. Simon, thanks very much indeed. And to all our guests, we appreciate your time. It's a, it's a difficult time, frankly, so, so good luck to everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. And it's difficult because even the greatest experts can't give definitives because it's changing so much, mm -hmm. can't they?